call it a candid camera of ethics, a sort of lab experiment that can have unexpected results. Here's John Quinones. <laughs> Three teenage boys looking for trouble, big trouble. This looks like you overshot the trash can, Zach. Within moments, they surround someone's car, and they're trying oh, to break in. Can you break in? I think I almost got it, dude. <laughs> you almost got it? Yeah. And now they spray paint the car with graffiti. This man who's driving by has seen enough. Hey, f*** off. Is that your car? What? Is that your car? You can. Have somebody else's car? I guess I'll call the police then. A friend of the man arrives and makes the call to 911. The cops will take care of you. Oh, okay. It's a nice okay. facility for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. You'll lie three the squares a day, buddy. Yeah. But the police are not coming, and these teenage vandals are not going to jail. They're actors. The car and the hidden cameras belong to us. We wanted to know if anyone would step in and try to stop a blatant act of vandalism in a suburban parking lot. But as you'll see, before our experiment is over, we'll get a lesson in human nature we could never have predicted. Our teenage vandals are loud and pretty brazen in broad daylight, yet people continue to walk right by. Do they think the boys are trashing their own car? Well, even when it becomes clear the car is not the boys, many keep right on going. I hope that's your car. Yeah, I'm spray painting my own car. You being sarcastic? Yeah. This woman seems to be almost joking with the boys. Almost. Don't do mine, please. I can't do it. Uh, I promise I won't do yours. The women keep on walking. Later they told us they would have called the police. And how about this woman? Will she step up? She looks concerned. She soon joined by another woman. They stop, speak, but keep going. She says getting involved isn't worth the aggravation. I have to say, there's times where I have been a witness to things and I've had to take off work and go to court. I was horrified, but we did keep walking. I should have done something. This woman keeps an eye on the scene from a safe distance, but we'll come back to her later. <laughs> Our vandals, meanwhile, have been at it for nearly three hours, destroying that car and seldom being challenged. But they'll soon meet their match. This man, sprinting up the path, demand some answers. Is it yours? Is it yours? No. So why don't you just mind your own business? Is this is public business. Public business? Public That's public business. business. They take somebody's vehicle private property in public. Let me show you how much I care, sir. I don't have no understand. The boys, meanwhile, are undaunted. Hope you enjoy the jog. Something else you wish to say to me? Something else you wish to say to me? No, I'm sorry. You're the one that keeps talking as I'm walking away. You got a problem? Yeah, I do. I hate folks to talk to me behind my back. Why don't you just... I'm on my own business, but shut up. All right. Why don't you just take... Shut up! Sir? Sir? Hi. I'm John Quinones, and we're with ABC News. When we introduce ourselves to Brian Jakes, he's still pretty steamed at the boys and at us. While he calms down, we talk to his wife, Dawn, who had walked by the boys earlier. I was keeping an eye on him. I was waiting for my husband to come back, because I wasn't going to confront three boys by myself. Brian has cooled off now, and he says he was just acting on a lesson his father taught him. You can't turn your blind eye or deaf ear. Somebody's in trouble. It wasn't your property. No, you're right, it wasn't. But, you know, it was somebody's. You know what? We're all in this together. He took action in a way that was selfless, and it was about stopping something bad from happening. Jack DeVidio, professor of psychology at Yale University. He made a difference. I don't think it was a smart thing to do, necessarily, but I think it was a good thing and the right thing to do. Dangerous? Dangerous. That's why most people will walk by. Indeed, our vandals have been at it for most of the morning, viciously destroying someone else's car. Dozens of people have walked by, yet only a handful have challenged them. But we're about to discover that if this kind of vandalism in broad daylight doesn't get much attention, something else does, something we could have never imagined. 
Remember, all that destruction by our vandals triggered just one 911 call. But it turns out two other calls were made to 911 from the same park. 911, where's the emergency? In uh, Richmond, New Jersey. But those calls were about another car parked nearby. A couple guys in the car laying down like they look like possibly they're getting ready to uh, rob somebody. Rob somebody? How does he know that? The caller hangs up, but a few moments later, he's back. We got three black kids laying in the car, and there's a lot of little kids in the car. I'm just keeping an eye on them. In fact, the young people in the car are just sleeping. They also just happen to be black. Whether it's because of the media, because of history, we as Americans have an association of blacks with crime. Both blacks and whites have that association of blacks with crime. It doesn't make sense. You call the cops on sleeping kids and not the vandals. There's nothing rational. But if we have the associations of blacks with crime, we see what we expect. And even if they're sleeping, we can make that into a potential criminal act. If that had been white kids sleeping. Then they'd be white kids sleeping. But coming up, if a few African Americans resting in a car trigger calls to 911, what'll happen when we replace the white vandals with three black actors? Will that make a difference? When What Would You Do comes back. To find out how people react to a blatant act of vandalism, we sent white teenagers, actors hired by us, to trash a car in broad daylight. And then we watched as dozens of people walked right by. As it turned out, there was just one call to 911. But at the same time, from the same park, 911 operators got two other emergency calls. And to our astonishment, those calls were not about our vandals, but about the young people in this car. A couple guys in the car laying down like they look like possibly they're getting ready to uh, rob somebody. The people in the car were African American and they were just sleeping. We know because we invited them here. They're friends and relatives of another set of actors hired by us for the second part of our experiment. What'll happen if we change the race of those vandals? And if this group could trigger 911 calls just by dozing in their car, what'll happen when we send these black teenagers out to do some real damage? As she walks by the vandals, this woman is already on her cell phone. Yeah, I'm at the Ridgewood Vet Pond, and uh, by the walking path, there's a group of one, two, three kids. And right on her heels, this man, cell phone in hand. 911, where's your emergency? Yeah, hi, I'm over in Ridgewood at the uh, Shaw River Park, okay. Ridgewood Avenue. Okay, people spray painting a car? Yep. All right, we got it ready, we'll send it off. This woman asks the boys what they're up to. Uh, man, oh, no, we ain't doing nothing, man. It's having fun, man. While maintaining a safe distance, she also calls 911. Kids are beating up on a car. How many kids? Three kids. Black or white. Uh, they both they all three look like they're just black. Black males. Yep. I just gonna walk away like nothing happened. The police will be here. Huh? The police are coming. All three were angered by the vandalism, but wary of confrontation. Teenagers are kind of unpredictable. They seemed like they weren't afraid of being caught. I wasn't going to go especially right up to them because they had tools um, that could be used against me. And there's three of them and one of me. The destruction continues, and it's clear that in this predominantly white suburb, our three African-American vandals are generating more interventions and more calls to 911 than the white vandals. Neighbors pulling out the cell phones. One lady almost tripped, the same calling like, uh, yeah. they're like, yeah. <laughs> they're here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, is that your car? No. Is it yours? No, but you shouldn't be doing that. I felt outraged. How dare you come to our backyard and do something like that in the middle of the day in front of our kids. I don't care where you're from. I don't care what color you are. You're doing something illegal. And so immediately I, I, I decided to call the police. Ridgewood Police, can I help you? Yes, hi. Uh, um, there's actually three kids in the park and uh, they're vandalizing a car. They're actually painting the car and they're trying to break in the door right now. My husband was right to say that what if those kids had a gun? 
And at that moment, honestly, I didn't think about that. The way I am, if I see something, I do something right away. What I found fascinating is that she defined that situation as her backyard. Suddenly it becomes us against them. It was clear then that these people are outsiders and they don't, they don't belong here and they don't belong here doing the things that they're doing. This is not your car? No. You have to stop. Why? It's illegal. Okay. It is? Yeah, somebody's going to call the cops. This conversation lasts four minutes and this woman even gives the boys her name. What's your name? Kim. Which they promptly paint on the car. Now we said that you did it. Let me see. And now we're going to call the cops on you. <laughs> <laughs> so what difference did it make when we changed the vandals' rates? A total of 10 calls to 911 compared to one call when the vandals were white. And more people stepped in. They probably recognize that there's vandalism going on more because these, these kids are black, because of the associations, the expectations, the stereotypes they have, and the fact that these kids are from a different neighborhood. By intervening or calling 911 on the yeah, black yeah, vandals, yeah. people are doing the right yeah. thing. But the white vandals were more likely to get a pass. Obviously what you guys were doing was wrong and what the white kids were doing was wrong. Mm -hmm. But the reaction was not the same. The reaction not the same. You know, they say, you know, treat people equally, but, you know, as, as you see, you know, it's, it's hey, really still it? going on, you know. There's, there's many different types of racism. We asked those who intervened, would you have acted any differently if the boys had been white? I think I would have done the same thing. Maybe I would have stopped them sooner. I did notice they were African-American young boys who were in a white neighborhood, but if they had been white kids, I mean, we would have done exactly the same. I might have done it quicker. I probably hesitated because they were black. I don't like to assume that three black kids are up to trouble. But the response to their vandalism isn't what these young men will remember most about this experience. They'll remember that while the white actors were busy laying waste to that car, there were two 911 calls reporting suspicious African Americans asleep in their car. The people in that car were actor Justin Chandler's family. These kids are destroying this car and trying to break in. They're not even meanwhile, worried about they, it. Meanwhile, they worried about Justin's family over Sleeping. There. Sleeping, Sleeping in, in the car. car. Black. It was wrong. Well, I mean, here we are breaking into a car, and there they are sleeping, you know? I was, I actually wasn't even shocked. I was just sort of offended. Tells me that there's still racism out here. And people are frightened by people color their skin. Your message to folks? It would be a better world if we could stop racism. I don't know if that's going to happen because it's such a big world, but you can help to stop. There's always someone that, you Maybe know, this will help. Yeah, this will yeah. help. Maybe this could help. It'll take a yeah, real definitely. long time. But maybe this will make a difference. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. Right. Good, guys.